Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be drawing a Japanese kitsune mask. It's the Japanese fox from their folklore stories. And we're basically going to be drawing this from start to finish with a background. I've received multiple requests over the last few months to do a kitsune. And I've also received multiple requests to do more background work, including clouds, waves, you know, wind bars, things like this, and some flowers. So I decided to do another series. This will be part one, and the next one will be part two. So this is a two-part series on how to do a simple but traditional style kitsune mask with a background. Let's jump to the overhead. Okay guys, welcome back to the table. In today's video, we're gonna be drawing a kitsune mask. I'm gonna be using some rough sketch paper to start with. This can be any sketch paper. So grab yourself a sheet of paper. This is A3 in size. I'm also using my mechanical pencil to do our rough sketch. And I've also got an eraser handy in case we make some mistakes. Okay, first things first, we're gonna be using two inch uh, masking tape this time. So instead of our usual one inch masking tape, we're gonna be bordering this off with two inch masking tape. So you just wanna mark off really roughly two inches off the edges of your page. Do not worry about this being perfect at this stage. It's just to give you a really rough guideline and to sort of give you a center point so you know where to be putting your design. So we're going to put our Kitsune mask right in the center here and then have a few background elements going around it. I've had a few people ask me to do more masks and then I've also had a few people ask me to do more videos where I incorporate a little bit of background and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to go too crazy. I want to keep this fairly traditional looking, which means really simple, really bold but we are gonna go ahead and start this one now. So to start off, we're gonna draw a circle. Just like that. You're gonna cut off the back of the circle a little bit. So just draw a straight line like this. You're only cutting off, you know, a sliver. And same goes for this like front area. It's gonna dip in a little bit here. So just cut off a little curve like that. From here, we're going to go ahead and put in a center line. So we're going to come, it's going to be a three quarter sort of angle. So just coming down across the front with a curved line. And I bring that line down. We're going to draw in two curved lines to give us space for our eyes. So coming across the face and, a, and around the front. So it curves around the front of the shape. And the same thing below it. You want to make the eyes nice and big. So this whole space will be dedicated to the eyes. Okay, now coming forward to about this edge of the circle here, we'll just drop in a circle or an oval. And then coming from that, we're gonna do a curved line that comes back, touches our center line, and then curves up and around the top of this line here. Just like that. Just underneath the oval that we did here, put in another oval much larger right next to it and on the other side of it another smaller oval so this oval is long this way and this one is long up and down but it's a lot smaller than this oval here and this gives us that sort of muzzle cheek area uh, to work with from here you want to drop a line that comes underneath this oval and it's going to come down roughly to where this line here is and then it's gonna to start to curve back. And we just come back up into our little cutoff portion at the back here. To give us rough placement for the ears, we're gonna come back to where this is cut off at the back here. Come straight up with a line or a slight curve to the line. And then another slightly curved line back down. That'll give us the shape for one ear. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing, just have like a centimeters gap or so, come up. On the inside of the ears, you just wanna duplicate the outer shape. So we come up and back down to give us the inside of that ear. And for the other ear, we're gonna come up, having a thicker area on this side here. And then back down with a slightly thinner side over here. And this is just, we're seeing a 
a little bit less of the inside portion of the ear there. Okay, to give us our eye shape and to give us a rough placement for the eye, I'm gonna draw a line that comes from the back of the ear here, uh, the back of the inside portion of the ear straight down. And also a line that comes from, uh, it's gonna be like roughly here, so nearly at the end of this cheek oval here. That little box is roughly where we're gonna put our eye shape. And the shape of the eyes for these ones is a little bit odd. Basically comes down on an angle and to a point and then from a point out and back down just like that so it's almost like an S curve and then another wide S curve above it just like this and then I might just double up on that top line From the other side, you're going to do the same thing. Keep in mind the very tip of the eye will be cut off by the nose. So we're just going to come up basically and out underneath it and just doubling up on that line again. Okay, so now to start adding in a few refinement details here. Across the top of the nose, we're going to come across with a curved line and then basically like a curved corner triangle, upside down triangle give us our nose shape a line that comes straight down follows the curve of this oval and as it reaches about this area center to the eye it's just going to loop around back into itself and on the other side we're going to bring the line down out a little bit and then just join it back up with the nose for the top of the snout, you just follow that line straight back and around. Okay, to join up this side of the face, we're gonna follow our line down, just past the eye, and then it's gonna dip in and slightly back out. So it dips in just underneath the eye to join up with the muzzle there. We are now going to be doing the pattern work for this guy on the mask. Uh, I haven't done enough research myself to know that uh, if there's specific patterns or something that you have to do for, to make this look traditional. I've seen so many different patterns by different people uh, that I think you, you can just sort of make it up as long as you follow a few of the shapes and follow the curvature of the mask itself. But if you want to do this in a really traditional manner, just look at some reference pictures of actual uh, kitsune masks from Japanese uh, performing arts and you might find something there, but in this case I'm going to be sort of making it up and just doing stuff uh, from a few different references that I found online. So first things first, over the top of the eyes we're going to be doing these little teardrop shapes or these little sort of curved teardrop shapes that come around the curvature of the eye like that and they're going to follow the shape of the eye. On the other side, we will just do one and it will be obscured. So it'll be cut off by the side of the face there. Coming down the center line on the head here, I want to do these upside down quotation marks sort of things or apostrophes at the top of the head there. And I have done this one a little bit too high. So I want to make it a little bit lower. Okay, that will be the little bit of pattern work for there. And then a common one that I see is on the cheeks. There's a little bit of pattern work that kind of looks like whiskers. And so you can sort of add those in. I'm gonna come in underneath the eye here and add an S curve that follows the curvature of our eye and then comes to a point on the cheek here. And I'm gonna do a smaller one underneath that. Okay, so from here we're going to do the ropes and these are, you know, used or the, the cordage that's used to tie the mask to the face of the person who's wearing it. Uh, if you're doing this as a character and not as a mask, then you'd probably leave the ropes out. If you're doing it specifically as a mask, then we put the ropes in. I think it looks quite nice. We're going to come back to this flat portion we did at the back here and I'm going to add two little rings into it. So those two little rings are going to look 
basically like this one and above it two you could put more of these if you wanted to these are basically the ropes tied into the mask so there'd be like little holes on the side of the mask there and you just add these curved lines across them to give them that weaved look and then they look like rope from behind the mask here we're going to come out and up forming a loop it's going to come back down and behind those rings and then we're going to double up on that line and you want to keep the thickness of this roughly the same as the thickness of those loops because this is the thickness of your cord and you're going to add those little curved lines all along the rope as well okay we're going to add another rope to this just coming out from behind here another loop and coming out and then back in and don't be afraid to make these a little bit angular I've noticed with a lot of traditional Japanese work is things like rope and cordage can be a little bit angular not sure why this is could just be a style preference uh, for me I think it separates the smooth curvature of the background work and the character from the background basically it, it gives a little bit more visual contrast and it creates a little bit more interesting shapes as well we're going to bring another loop of rope that's going to come underneath our mask here like this and the more of this the that you add i think the more sort of complex and detail you can make your character give it more expression and i, I think guess you can make it interact with the background a little bit more as well so we'll add another loop of rope here and then from behind it i'm going to have a piece coming down like this and we'll have it come forward just like that for this piece that comes forward we're going to add an end to it now so just put a little ring in like this basically just two semicircle sort of shapes and then you're going to add a big teardrop shape to it at the end okay there's a teardrop shape to add a little bit of texture we're going to reach the end flick back a few times and then join the shape back up and then just add a couple of these little curved lines on the inside to indicate that that's like the frayed end of the rope from here i just want to add in a similar shaped uh, rope that comes out and maybe back a little bit and this will be the rope that comes off the other side of the head you would have a rope on the right and the left side of the head so that you can tie it around your face so we'll add another rope in over here just play around with different angles for these things and don't stress out too much just have fun with it add another ring we're viewing this ring from the opposite angle to this one so the curves go up and then we can put in another one of our little teardrop shapes at the end. Okay, last thing you wanna do from here is just add another loop of rope in on the other side to mirror this side a little bit, but you're gonna see a lot less of it because it is obscured by the head. So I'm just gonna bring up the lines to add in our rope shape and put our little diagonal sort of curved lines around it to indicate the sort of wrapped nature of that rope and I think that will do for our mask shape okay so I was recently asked how do I incorporate some background elements so I thought I'd cover that in today's video as well we're gonna add some cherry blossoms in for this one to start with so down here by the chin I draw in a circle another one below it and once you've got enough experience drawing cherry, cherry blossoms this is how I tend to do them uh, when I'm doing my pre-sketch I know how to draw cherry blossoms sort of freehand so I don't need to like sketch a hundred cherry blossoms and then just have to redraw them when I'm inking it um, I can generally just put circles in where I want cherry blossoms to be and then when I go to my inking phase I just go through and do all the cherry blossoms first that way I can do them just in ink and then ink the rest of it in case there are overlapping elements 
but once you get comfortable enough doing cherry blossoms you can just drop in circles where you'd like them to be this makes the process a little bit quicker and then we're going to put in some individual petals as well again you can just do these in the inking stage later on you don't have to draw these in now okay i have actually covered cherry blossoms in a previous video um, I've covered lots of different simple traditional style flowers, but I'm going to quickly show you guys just for the completeness sake on how to draw a cherry blossom and then you can go ahead and do the rest of them yourself. So we've got our circle here. We'll draw another circle on the inside to give us the center of our flower and we want five petals. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five lines. That'll give us a center line for each petal. And then each petal is basically going to come out have a V at the end and then join back up to center and that's basically how you're going to do each of the petals so again you're going to come out have a V that touches center and then comes back come out put in the little V and then come back and you're going to go around all of your flowers basically doing that exact same thing and then to do the leaves in back you basically just do these little very simple leaf shapes not stressing too much about detail you can get super you know crazy detail with it if you're doing cherry blossoms up close uh, you know if that's maybe the main subject matter of your drawing or painting then you can do that but in this case they're super simple because they're not a real big important part they're more backgroundy sort of elements so i'm going to quickly go ahead and do the cherry blossoms Okay, so we've gone ahead and drawn in all of our cherry blossoms. Like I said, if you're comfortable with it, just put circles in and draw them when you do your inking. But just for clarity's sake, I've gone ahead and drawn them very roughly, but I've gone ahead and drawn them in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit more background sort of stuff. So just below the bottom of our mask, I wanna have a cloud here. I kinda of wanna have it that he's, or that the mask is resting on a little cloud. So coming from behind our rope shape here, gonna do a little curved shape. And you're kind of going to draw these clouds the same way that you did as a kid just like big bump shapes the only difference is you're going to curl them so they're going to come in on a spiral okay just coming in behind our flowers here and sort of ending in the middle there if you want to you can make this a little bit wider i'm going to so coming out a little bit more just to give a little bit more space for that to curve back around and this curves back around underneath the mask there and following on from this I might do another one at the bottom here that comes around just behind our little rope end here just touches behind the bottom of the mask there And loops around like that okay so from here i want to draw in a little bit more of an actual background so what we're going to go ahead and do is basically use similar sort of cloud shapes to just construct a nice cloudy background we've got all of our focused stuff in the middle and like i said this is a traditional style design so i actually don't want to have too much uh, how do i put it like too much interaction and depth of detail with the background i kind of want to keep the simple block really solid black sort of black and gray background with nice bright and simple subject matter in the foreground so to do the background I'm basically going to start in one of the corners here and i'm just going to do a curved line like that and we're going to build off that okay so coming down to where we did this curved line here we're going to build off that for our background we're doing i guess wind bars or clouds we're going to do these bumps which are just curved lines that come across following the shape of our curve there behind this you could have another curved line and one more that comes a little bit wider across our page like that and you could do another row of our little curves that come across the page so these are clouds and like wind bars basically from here i can put in some sort of larger cloud shapes so they're going to come behind here behind parts of our main subject matter 
and down across the page like this That's just to give us some actual sort of cloud shapes although they're a bit bigger you want to vary them in size though you don't want them to all be the same so we have some smaller ones and some larger sort of cloud shapes in there coming off from this side of the page i'm going to do one of our swirly clouds coming behind this one at the front here slightly coming off of our border and curling around itself like that and just behind that cloud that we just did I'll do some more of these curved lines that come up this one will be a bit wider and then maybe a row of our little curves little cloud curves another line and then maybe some larger clouds above this so as you can see this probably doesn't sound like I'm explaining very much as you can see doing backgrounds like this in this sort of traditional way it's really simple it's actually really straightforward you want to have nice flow to your image so have the wind bars and things going in different directions depending on your image imagery your subject matter but it's pretty simple. You're basically just doing curved shapes that look like clouds. So little circles and things like that. Uh, some swirls that look like swirling wind. And then of course you've got your straight or curved bars that come across. And this is sort of looks like the you know rushing wind or if you're doing water, looks like rushing waves or smooth water, just depending on how you put this together and how the rest of your subject matter sort of sits with it. But it is a pretty straightforward way to do some background, especially if you just want to keep it simple and you don't want to go too crazy with your background. So this is a really nice way to do it. We're just going to finish this one off by coming around the top. So here. another element we're going to put in at the top here might be another cur curly wave. So we're just going to come in, not a wave, curly cloud, I should say. Come in like this. We'll bring that one straight down and drop another couple of wind bars in there, actually. I think that looks really good just sort of following the same shape as the rest of our clouds here we'll put the curly one here coming around the top and then following that shape forward with our wind bars okay coming around to the back corner here i'm going to drop in a curly cloud like this a spiral cloud and just behind it the wind bars that come down like that and for the back of the head here we're going to come out from behind our big curly cloud that sits underneath our mask with a couple of wind bars and you can just fill in any additional gaps that you have with cloud okay and that that's a real simple thing to do as well is if you've got gaps and you're not sure how to fill them just put in some more little bumps and curves and that will give you more clouds and that sort of cloudy look in your background. Okay, and that is how we draw a kitsune mask with flowers and a background in that sort of traditional style. So I hope I covered enough of the sort of requests in this video. Next week, we're going to be covering the lining and the inking for this one, but we've just done the sketch and the background. So we've got a lot of work done in this video and stay tuned for the next video, part two in this one where we will be outlining it and inking it. That is it guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you followed along because part two, we're going to be lining this one, shading it and coloring it all in part two. So go ahead, make sure you do part one so that you can follow along. If you would like to head over to Facebook at Dagger Designs and you can follow me over there to see my online portfolio, any upcoming videos that I have going on. And of course you can message me on the Facebook page to ask for tips or advice with your art or just send me your beautiful artwork. I'd love to see it. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know if you enjoyed today's video and what you would like to see in future videos, whether that be tutorials, art challenges, or just like vlog style talking videos where I talk about different types of artwork in the realm of tattooing or any other types of artwork. And last but not least, if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video when they come out. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Keep drawing. Bye.